Here we go. Um, it's 1230 AM. Um, just got back to the friendly confines of Massapequa Park, Long Island from uh, Madison Square Garden, where I watched uh, the Knicks season end tonight. Uh, I was not planning on going to this game tonight, um, but got a got a late late night text last night from my brother, um, who uh, had an extra ticket, and uh, I've never been to a a sporting event with my brother. He's 14 years older than me. Never been really that close, but this season, oddly enough, has has brought us closer together. Um, one of the many things I will remember. For, uh, for from this season, which has provided many many memories. So uh, went to the game. Um, quite an experience to be in the building for that, but I, I would not have felt right going to bed um, on the last day of the Knicks season without coming on here and um, just sharing a few thoughts. Um, and of course, because you guys are amazing, we already have something in the super chat from Kurt Kurt. Schulte, thanks for everything, John. What a run! Um, so I was I was thinking about this because it's tough to put a season into words um, in an, in one night, uh, you know, especially when when it's a season that is so good and it ends in such disappointing fashion. And it, there were so many nights and so many memories and so much positivity, um, and it's not. It's not just that this was a season full of positivity. It was a season full of positivity for an organization that has lacked any positivity, really, um, save for a couple of years and a couple of moments here and there over the last two decades. Um, but it was an organization that, you know, the Knicks, the Knicks weren't just losers. They were, <laughs> they were the laughing stock of the league. And uh, that's been really tough for those of us. Uh, and again, if you're here watching me, you are you are part of this group. Um, those of us who live and die and pour blood, sweat, and tears um, occasionally uh, over over this uh, basketball team who has given us so little back over all these years, um, and so for that to lead to this season where the expectations were perhaps lower than any other, you know, of all of the, the rough seasons that they've had, the expectations for this one were maybe the lowest. Um, and then to have this and all of the memories that came with it. And I was thinking about what made this, this, the way this season ended so disappointing. And yeah, I think part of it is the fact that you lose to the Hawks after we had owned the Hawks all year. And losing to Trey Young because Trey Young is just, I mean, if there is a, more of a shit heel in the NBA today, and I say that with great respect because the, the kid absolutely owned us. As much as as much as that part of it's difficult, and as obviously the, the Knicks did not did not play well, and and we'll you know I'll talk a bit about you know the specifics of who didn't play well. Um, I think part of the reason that this is so tough is. This season, because of the expectations going into it and the results that followed, it really did feel like magic. And I know um, I'm a grown man, 38 years and counting. Um, people watching this, I, I hope you're grown because if you're not grown, it's past your bedtime. You should get to sleep. Um, you know, you're too old to believe in magic after a certain point, right? Um, you know, but I don't know how else to describe what happened this season for the Knicks. I did think it was interesting where Derek Rose, uh, said in his post game unsolicited that, uh, the front office has big plans, you know, we'll see. Um, but yeah. And he also said that, you know, players around the league now talk about this as a spot that they want to come to and they see what's going on here. And, you know, that's significant. And if, you know, this season was always at its baseline. At its baseline was always about two things. It was about growing the talent that was already here and improving the asset chest, if you will, which they did 
tenfold between RJ and quickly and Obi, and we could talk about their performances tonight and obviously Julius and, and everybody else. Um, but also, you know, turning around the narrative and making this, um, you know, a, a, a team and an organization and a, a culture and all of those buzzwords that players around the league looked at and be like, you know what, let me look at the Knicks. Let me give the Knicks a chance. And I think they've done that. And then some, this feels like it's a new era coming. Um, I've never felt this way before. Robert Boy, Randall's been solid all year, but to be honest, this series has proven he can't be our number one guy. Uh, hopefully, Leon does some magic to get a star. RJ gets better in 2022. Yeah, we can have the Randall conversation right now. Um, Randall was bad this series. Uh, you can sugarcoat it. You can talk around it. Um what I witnessed firsthand with my own two little eyes in the third quarter uh, at the Garden was something that I have not seen this year, and honestly, I'm honestly I'm not even sure I saw it uh, last year. He was he was a he was a guy playing just very unsure of himself, and. Um, <laughs> I see my wife's comment. Um, it, yeah, he. I just he didn't he he didn't know whether he was coming or going, and it was a hesitation. There was timidity, and that timidity and hesitation rubbed off on his teammates. Amirat, thank you so much for this season. You have no idea how much I look forward to these after every game. I don't even have the words to respond to that. Um, thank you uh, for looking forward to to what we do here. The Knicks know that if they sign marginal free agents, they're essentially going to get what they just got from guys like Bullock and Burks and, and, and Noel and Ro like, these are good NBA players. And if you put them in a system and you give them the tools to succeed, like during the regular season, they're going to be able to succeed. All those guys are like seventh, seventh guys on really great teams. Six, maybe Rose, like a six man but mostly seventh, eighth guys on a really good team. And these guys were your number three, your number four, your number five, your number six. Taj Gibson, like, honestly, <laughs> this is fucking crazy. I think maybe Rose gets the nod because he, he kept us in so many games. But, like, if anybody wants to sit here and be like, Taj Gibson was the best Nick in this series, I'm not going to sit here and be like, you're wrong. Andrew Bank. Thanks for everything. My favorite season ever. Um, I'm ho I'm happy this is your favorite season ever, Andrew, but I, I hope you get some more good ones in the future because I don't want your fr first round playoff exit to be your, your favorite season ever. Uh, this team was years ahead of schedule and right on time. Well said. Can I steal that? I'm going to, I'm going to steal that one, Andrew. Um, but I will give you credit in tomorrow's newsletter. I've gotten a reputation over the last few years. Um, as being like Mr. Positivity amidst the shit and the foul stench of this team. And let me tell you, it has not always been easy. <laughs> but I always chose to look on the bright side, even when logic would dictate that that was a silly thing to do. For once, for once, I can sit here on the last game of the season, and I could say without hesitation, I do not have to sit here on the last day of the season and blow smoke up my or anyone's asses about what is to come for this team. And thank you to every Nick fan um, who has who has been along for this ride this season. Um, I I can I just. From the bottom of my heart, um, this season has been special, not only for everything I just spoke about. <laughs> One, two, three, Cancun. <laughs> this season has been special, not only for everything that I just spoke about, but for being able to share it with all of you um, and just go on this ride together. Because what a ride it's been. And it sucks that it's over. It really sucks that it's over. But we'll remember it. I'll remember it. I'll be old and gray, but I'll be telling my grandkids about this next season. 
um, when their when their grandpa became somebody that uh, people wanted to watch after games as he uh, sipped on his whiskey and said silly things. So on that note, I love you all truly from the bottom of my heart. Um, and, um, yeah, I'll see you soon.